Weddings and funerals. That's all I ever wear this for. Yeah, well, you look smart. All you've got to do now is act smart. And how do you do that, Harry? You look them in the eye and you make sure they believe you. <laughs> is that all? Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll do just great. <sighs> I hope so. Look, Harry, I know I was a bit rough on you at first, and I'm sorry about that. But thanks for all the support. Should be me thanking you, standing up to Manny. You're a good man, Jack. Thanks. And for what it's worth, I think you're an innocent man as well. Well, it's worth a lot, mate. Right, Jack, let's have your vans waiting. Good luck, mate. Look, Bev, I already let the office know, but I wondered if you'd remind anyone who needs to know the boys won't be at school today. Yeah, the trial, yeah. No, they're OK. I, I can't say too much at the moment. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, of course I will. Thanks, Bev. Bye. What are you doing? Going to school. Rob, you've got to be here in case you're called to court. Who is it doing a call till tomorrow? Yes, but she didn't know for certain, did she? Look, I don't want to hang around here all day. I've got loads of catching up work to do. Well, what if they send a car here and you're at school? Well, they'll have to pick me up from school then, won't they? Do you want to go with him? I've got enough work to do on the farm. Look, guys, I think it would be better if you were both in the same place. Well, tell him then. I'm staying put. For goodness sake, Mum, you look fine. I don't feel fine. I hardly slept a wink last night. All you've got to do is tell the truth. I know. That's what's bothering me. Diane, I just popped in to wish you luck. Thanks. I'm going to need it. I'm really not looking forward to this at all. I'd best be off. Alan and Betty are waiting for me. Bye, Mum. You'll be OK. We'll be thinking of you. So what time's your appointment? Half past nine. What are you still doing here, then? I was actually considering giving the surgery a ring, telling them to cancel. Cancel? What do you mean, cancel? They're sure to be busy, and I do feel so much better today. I don't care what you're feeling like today. You've been unwell and you're going. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Listen to me, Ashley. I want you checking out, if not for your own sake, then for our babies. I don't want him or her being without a father in ten years' time because you didn't want to waste anybody's time. You OK? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. I had it say that last though. I started thinking it never gonna happen. You'll be okay. Come on. Let's just get there, shall we? Ill-gotten gains, are you? I suppose you're happy now you've stolen my future. Just ignore her. <laughs> I'll certainly try it. <laughs> and you, you diddling little swine, we had a deal. Call yourself a professional. I think you'd better go. Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Sneak away, the pair of you. Slide off into your little holes. You should be ashamed of yourself the way you behave to me. You're the one who ought to be ashamed for doing a show like that in public. What do you think you're looking at? Oh! <laughs> I didn't see you there, sorry. That's all right, I'm just on my way to work. Oh, my goodness, what have you done to your eye? Uh, intruders. What? Uh, my latest acquisition, uh, Dingle's Barn. I was checking round it and disturbed them trying to break in. <laughs> you poor man, have you told the police? No, I and I'd be grateful if you didn't either. If they thought the place was vulnerable and the insurance company found out, my premiums would go sky high. You should do something about that, I. Get yourself to the doctor. I haven't got time to hang around in a surgery for hours on end. Paddy might have something that would take the swelling down. I'm not a pet pooch. Don't be silly. You can trust Paddy. Leave it with me. I'll get back to you. Jack! Jack, go this way, Jack! Jack! 
Jack, did you do it, Jack? Jack, did you do it? Jack, give us a scout. Jack! Those cameras. Half of the course, Jack. Don't worry about it. Mr. Sugden. Jack, this is your QC, Jeffrey Hamilton Jones. Nice to meet you. Hello. Are you ready for this? As ready as I'll ever be. Good. We've got about ten minutes, so is there any question you want to ask? Any little thing you're not quite sure of? I think I'm okay with everything. I just want to get in there and get it over with. I hope you're not thinking of taking any of them. Paddy. <laughs> Not that it'd do you any terminal damage, but you might spend rather a long time on the loo. It's not for myself, it's for Eric Pollard. Oh, be my guest then. It's not a joking matter, Paddy. Eric accosted two burglars in the Dingles barn and got a very badly bruised eye for his trouble. What? He'd want to break in there? Actually, I wasn't supposed to tell anyone that, so please forget I said anything, all right? What is all this, Gloria? I hope you're not getting too involved with Eric Pollard. I simply offered to find something to take the bruising down, that's all. If you've got nothing to offer, I'll just get on with my work. Hang on, I'm sorry, Gloria. I shouldn't have said all that. I'm, it's none of my business, really. Sorry. I appreciate your concern for my welfare, Paddy, but I'm a big girl now. I do know what I'm doing. Of course you are, and uh, I haven't got anything in here that'll help reduce bruising, but I might have something next door, all right? That would be very kind. Right, I won't do that. Here is. Sugden, court number two. It's up there. There's people outside. It's creepy. Always draws a crowd, does Miss Fortune. Yes, Betty's right. They're best ignored. They've got nothing better to do than gloat over a bit of scandal. Oh, let's see. Where are we? No need. There's Richie and Angie. Just follow them. Oh, what, look, would you like us to sit with you on here? You're waiting to be called. No, you go into the court with Bet. It's important Jack sees a few friendly faces when they bring him up. Oh, Ashley, how did you get on? Well, the doctor said I appear to be reasonably healthy for my size and age. What do you mean, reasonably? Didn't he give you a clean bill of health? Not exactly. Ashley, what's wrong with you? What did he say? He said I was overweight. Well, I could have told you that. Apparently, I need to lose half a stone. And what about your palpitations? Stress, apparently. There was no sign of anything untoward in my heart. Although he did say my blood pressure is apparently too high. Oh, Ashley. And he took some blood, which he's sending away for analysis. They'll check my uh, cholesterol level, blood sugar, that sort of thing. He did say he didn't think they'd find anything. So what are you supposed to do in the meantime? Watch what I eat. And take up regular exercise, which is why I intend to start jogging. Where are you going? Dig out some old rugby gear. Where are you going to start today? No time like the present. All rise. Are you John Jacob Sugden? Yes. John Jacob Sugden, on count one of this indictment, you are charged with murder. The particulars are that on the 16th day of November 2000, you murdered Sarah Sugden. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. On count two of this indictment, you are charged with attempted murder. The particulars are that on the 16th day of November 2000, you attempted to murder Richard Carter. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. And I intend to prove to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that what happened to Sarah Sugden the unfortunate wife of the man now before you in the dock 
was not the result of a simple accident, nor indeed some bungled attempt at insurance fraud, but a premeditated and cold-blooded plan to exact final revenge on her and her lover. My Lord, I should like to call my first witness, Richard Carter. I didn't know a woman had been prosecuting him. Let's just hope she's not as efficient as she looks. Take the Bible in your right hand and read the words on the card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You are Richard Carter? Yes. And you live at Pear Tree Cottage, 18 Main Street, Emmerdale? Yes. Up to the 16th of November last, who shared that cottage with you? Sarah Sugden. The deceased wife of the defendant? Yes. Can you tell the jury what was your relationship with Sarah Sugden? We lived together. We were lovers. And at this time, was she married to the defendant, Jack Sugden? Yes, but she'd left him to come and live with me. And was this a temporary arrangement? No. We've been together for over six months. I wanted to divorce him and marry me. You say you were lovers, Mr. Carter. Does that mean you were in love with Sarah Sugden? Very much. How much? I loved her more than anything I'd ever loved in my life. Would it be true to say that her death was a great loss to you? Of course it was. <sighs> Mr. Carter, I apologize for any distress it may cause you to recreate the events of the night of the 16th of November, and indeed the events leading up to that dreadful incident. But in the interest of this case, it's essential that I take you through them now. It's all right, I'm, I'm fine now. Thank you. Morning. Hey, old vicar. Morning, Terry. What are you trying to do? Make us all feel guilty? I'm attempting to lose weight and lower my blood pressure. And um, would you <laughs> say it were working? I don't know. You're the expert. What do you think? Well, I think some decent gear wouldn't go amiss. Well, what do you suggest? Well, a decent pair of trainers for the start. And, well, maybe a tracksuit. Would well, that be very expensive? Think of it as an investment. Investment? Yes, that's good. I'd be investing in my life, wouldn't I? Yeah. Well, it's money well spent if uh, you intend keeping it up. I do, Terry. Most assuredly. Yeah, well, I might join you myself if you fancy a bit of company. Really? Aye. I could do with losing a few pounds myself. Oh, that would be splendid. I'm sure your advice would be invaluable. Right. Go on, then. You don't want to stiffen up, do you? No. No, thank you. Uh, see you tomorrow, then. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a ring. I thought you'd be used to it in your job. There isn't a copper in the world who likes court days. Not surprised. All this waiting. It's doing my head in. So the barn was ablaze and you climbed down from the hayloft? Yes. Why wasn't Sarah able to follow you down the ladder? It was on fire. I told her to jump, but she couldn't. The flames were too intense. Then something exploded. And you ran out? I couldn't breathe. I had to get some more air so I could go back in and save her. But you didn't go back in, did you, Mr. Carter? No. And why was that? Because he prevented me. Who prevented you? Jack Sugden. I wanted to go back in, but he overpowered me. And was that to save you? No, it wasn't to save me. It was to make sure Sarah didn't get out alive. And how can you possibly know that? Because it was him that started the fire in the first place. You saw him? Oh, yeah. 
I saw him all right. Can we go back for a minute to the night before the fire? Did the defendant threaten both you and Sarah Sugden in the Woolpack Inn? Yes, he did. Can you remember what he said? He said he swore to God that he could kill Sarah. Swore to God he could kill his own wife? He threatened me as well. What did he say, exactly? He said I could kill the pair of you. I'll be calling more witnesses in due course to verify this, my lord. What was the mood of the defendant at the time? He was, he was out of control. There were people holding him down when I got to the pub. Restraining him? He attacked Sarah. He dragged her from a chair and he pinned her up against the wall. My lord, I must protest. The witness was not present during these allegations. Yes, thank you, Mr Hamilton Jones. Mr Carter, you will only tell us about things you saw or heard yourself. Ms Browning. Mr Carter, what was the mood of the defendant at this point? He was crazy. Totally out of control. Were you frightened by what he said? I was frightened for Sarah. It was like he hated it. You could see it in his eyes. What was Mrs Sugden's reaction to his threats? She was just as frightened as me. That's why we're hiding in the barn in the first place. You've got to understand, this man's dangerous. He even attacked me in hospital. My lord, I really must protest. We are not here to discuss what happened after the event. Thank you, Mr Hamilton Jones. Mr Carter, you will address your evidence only to the night in question or the events leading up to the night in question. The jury will disregard the witness's last remark. Oh, oh that's coming up beautifully. Yeah, beeswax. Can't beat the old and trusted remedies. Mm, speaking of which... Oh, I hope that's not what I think it is. Don't worry, it's not from the surgery. It's something Paddy had in. Vets are always getting bruised. It comes from dealing with animals. Ah. Well, that's all very appropriate, and I thank you for the effort. I'll put some on later. No, later's no good. You need to put some on now if you want to get rid of that swelling. Ah, I can't. My hands are <laughs> covered in polish. <laughs> Tilt your head back. Ah, really, um, I'd rather wait if you don't mind. No, don't be silly. I'm not going to hurt you. Ah, careful, it's a bit painful. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, that's rather good. There, you see? All that fuss over nothing. Uh, thank you. Mr Carter, you stated to my learned friend that my client threatened you in the Woolpack Inn on the night before the fire. Is that correct? Yes. I believe you referred to my client as saying... I swear to God I could kill you, to his wife, and then I could kill the pair of you. Is that correct? Yes. Not will kill you, but could kill you. Yes, it's the same thing. No, Mr Carter, it's not the same thing at all. Could is not a threat. What my client was saying to you both, and we've already heard you admitting to leaving his six-year-old daughter alone in your cottage. What he said was that he could kill you both for what you'd done, not that he would kill you both for what you'd done. What you were hearing was the outburst of a man, not unnaturally, beside himself with worry, when he discovered, via another person entirely, that his six-year-old daughter had been wandering the streets, alone, in the dark, in her nighty, when she should have been under you or your lover's care. I know what he meant. Everybody did. Ask them if you don't believe me. I intend to, Mr Carter. Now, could I turn your attention to the night of the fire? You claim that you saw my client setting fire to the barn. Is that correct? Yes. And how did he do this? He poured petrol everywhere and set it alight. And you saw him do this? Yes. What were you doing at the farm, Mr Carter? I'm sorry? Well, you claim that you and Mrs Sugden were in fear for your lives because my client allegedly threatened he could kill you, and yet you end up together at the farm the very next night. Why was that? We'd had a row. Sarah was mad at me for leaving Victoria on her own. She walked off. To her estranged husband's farm? Yes, she wanted to talk to him. 
on her own to a man she was afraid might kill her? It was in the heat of the moment. We'd had this disagreement earlier. Yes. Because she was going to the farm to tell her husband that she was leaving you and going back to him. Isn't that correct? Yes. And how did you feel about this? I didn't really think she meant it. Even though she'd already told her friend, a police officer, Angela Reynolds, the same thing that very night? Yes. Did you want her to go back to her husband? Of course not. I loved her. And you'd have done anything to keep her? Yes. She was so much a part of your life? She was my life. So, the woman who was your life decided to go back to the man she was lawfully married to, rejecting you. Is that why you lied to the police about my client setting fire to the barn? I didn't lie. I put it to you that you were lying then and that you are lying now, Mr. Carter, and that your lie is fueled by a desire for revenge on a man to whom you knew you had already lost. No! Fate dealt you a bitter blow, Mr. Carter. You lost the woman you loved twice, first to her husband, and then to the fire. But I put it to you that the first loss was by far the worst. That's not true. I loved Sarah. Say what you like, twist it as much as you want, but I saw him do it. I saw him light that fire. And it's the fire that killed Sarah, the fire that he started. <laughs>